Hi guys, and welcome back to SDRTK. Hope you're having a great week. I've had some pretty good success with a number of newer products, so I thought I'd check out their NW8000 USB Professional Condenser Microphone. Now this microphone is designed to be a simple plug and play solution. It's USB, so you connect it up to your computer, there's no software to install, and you have a microphone. Now all the audio in this review is going to be without processing, so you can hear what this sounds like out of the box. And I will say that I can hear some hiss in the background, but I'll show you later on just how easy it is to clean that up. Now I picked up this microphone for 25 US dollars, so it's a very affordable solution, and I wanted to see what we could get for that price. So in this video, I'm gonna roll back the clock. I will unbox the microphone for you. I'm gonna briefly go through the specs, and then we'll get into the audio tests. So we'll do some audio tests on this mic. We'll compare it to a few other microphones to see what we get. Then I'll take a look at the build quality. We'll test it for plosives, handling noise. I'm also going to see how this performs on miking up the guitar and bass cabinets. So we'll see uh, if it can be used for instrument recording. Then I'll get into that cleaning up the sound. I talked about the little bit of a hiss in the background. So I'll do a process demonstration to clean that up and shape the tone of this microphone a bit. And then I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, now we'll go ahead and unbox the NW8000 USB. And uh, I have to say for the price, it's actually in a pretty nice box. Go ahead and open it up and see we get some instructions inside. Booklet actually seems uh, fairly well done too. It's uh, it's full color as you can see. And uh, we'll take a look at what else we get. We get a shock mount here. I can see that it's, uh, it's actually fully sealed up. So we'll go ahead and open it. There's some desiccant inside there as well. And uh, I can already see that the uh, elastic straps are already off a few of the uh, mounts in there. So I'll have to just pop those back on before we start. But it uh, feels pretty cheap, but uh, it's, uh, it's a shock mount. Next, we get a foam filter. Again, nothing so special about that. The USB cable is actually fairly thick, and I see it has a ferrite choke on it. So it looks like they paid some attention there. Not too bad. Then we get the microphone itself, and I'll go ahead and open that up. Now in the microphone, uh, it's a USB mic, so you can see that connector on the bottom. It's all metal construction. It actually uh, feels pretty solid. It's very lightweight though. So uh, let's, uh, let's check the sound out. Now the NW8000 has a 16 millimeter electric condenser, which is not surprising in this price point. It is a super cardioid polar pattern. That's a little bit unusual to find. And so we'll have to test that out later on. Frequency response is rated at 20 to 20,000 Hertz with a sensitivity of 2.67 millivolts. They claim a signal to noise ratio of 84.7 dB. Not entirely sure about that, but uh, again, um, we can clean up the hiss in the background later on. Sample rate is rated at 192 kilohertz with a 24 bit depth. And the thing is, is that we don't need 192 kilohertz to give us 20 to 20,000 Hertz frequency response. There's a lot of uh, a lot of manufacturers lately are touting their 192 kilohertz sample rate, and really it's uh, it's unnecessary unless we're going to have a far wider frequency response than that. More in detail on that in another video, but nonetheless, that's what they're claiming here. Interface says USB 2.0. Cable is two uh, two meters long. Of course, it's a USB uh, A connection on the end. And uh, you should note that this microphone is not compatible with either Xbox or PlayStation. And of course, this entire time you've been listening to me on the NW8000 USB. Got the gain again about 75%. That's giving me uh, a nice signal level between about negative 16 and negative 12 dB. So that's right about where I want to be for recording. I've got a working distance here. I'm sitting at about 8 inches off the microphone. I've got it slightly across axis just to help resist plosives. And this is the kind of sound that you get. I think in a working distance, I mean, this is a pretty reasonable working distance for a microphone like this. If you're going to use it in this kind of application, kind of an on-camera mic, if you're doing just a voiceover recording, you could get a little bit closer up. But I think this is a, a pretty fair representation of what the sound is like. Out of the box, again, there's no processing applied here. Now, well, let's go ahead and uh, compare this to a few other microphones. All right, the first comparison I'm going to do is another USB microphone. I'm going to compare the newer NW8000 USB against the Fine Fine K658. Again, both are USB microphones, that same idea, 192 kilohertz spec. And uh, the uh, Fine Fine is considerably more expensive and it's a dynamic microphone. So first you're hearing me, of course, here on the NW8000 USB. Nothing has changed, gain is at 75% and there's no processing applied. Now I'll switch over to the K658. And now you're listening to me on the Fine Fine K658. 
I've got it at about six and a half inches away from my mouth. Again, a cross axis. It's a dynamic microphone, USB interface. Again, same kind of a 192 kilohertz, 24 bit depth. But um, the sound uh, overall, this microphone's about four to five times the price of the uh, newer NW8000 USB. Both are uh, plug and play. The Fine Fine also has uh, an audio interface for uh, headphones on it, so you can monitor directly through it. Of course, it has a uh, control on the side for gain and mute, and uh, also has RGB. So it has some additional features. But in terms of the sound comparison, again, no processing on the Fine Fine. Uh, gain is also set about 75%. This is the sound. And uh, you've had a chance to hear both microphones. Can you tell which one I'm speaking on? Is it the NW8000 or is it the K658? Check the upper corner to find out. And now we'll compare the NW8000 against the Behringer XM8500. The XM8500 is an inexpensive, dynamic, handheld microphone. It's got an XLR interface, so it's connected into the Scarlett 8i6. But we're starting out here again on the uh, NW8000 USB. This is a sound you get, 75%, no processing. Now we'll switch over to the XM8500. And now you're listening to me on the Behringer XM8500. This is an XLR microphone. I have it connected into my Focusrite Scarlett 8i6. I've got the gain set at about 330. No processing applied here. You can see I have it again at about six inches off my mouth. This is a dynamic handheld vocal microphone. And so uh, this is what the sound's like. The microphone itself is about the same price as the NW8000, except, of course, that the uh, XM8500 requires an audio interface. And now that you've heard both microphones, can you tell the difference? Am I talking to you on the NW8000 USB or the XM8500? Again, check the upper corner to find out. And now we'll do the comparison with the NW8000 versus the Rode Pod mic. Of course, a very popular microphone for content creators and podcasters. Here again, I'm talking first on the NW8000. Nothing changed. Gained at 75% and without processing. Now I'll switch over to the Pod mic. And I'm on the pod mic, and this is connected into the Focusrite Scarlett 8i6. I have the gain set at 4 o'clock, and uh, this, again, no processing. This microphone has been uh, very popular for some time now uh, for its sound as well as the look and build quality. Uh, microphone, of course, is about four times the price uh, of the NW8000. Plus, again, you need an XLR interface. And so this is what the uh, pod mic sounds like. And now that you've heard me on both microphones, can you tell the difference? Am I speaking on the NW8000 or the Rode Pod mic? Once again, check the top corner to find out. And now we'll switch over and do the comparison with a few condenser microphones. This time I'm going to compare the NW8000 against the Mayono AU P320S. It's another XLR microphone. But of course, again, first you're hearing me on the NW8000. This is at 75% gain. Again, no processing applied. Now I'll switch over to the Mayono. And now you're hearing me on the Mayono P320S. Again, I have the uh, distance, about working distance here, at about uh, seven inches or so, seven inches away uh, from my mouth, similar again to the NW8000. And uh, gain on the Focusrite Scarlett 8i6 here is set at 11 o'clock. No processing being applied to this microphone. So this is another popular brand, uh, entry-level brand for podcasters and content creators. Uh, again, here we need a, uh, an XLR interface for this. But this will give you an idea and the difference of the sound, the capsules between these two mics. And of course, once again, since you've heard me on both microphones, can you tell which one I'm speaking on now? Is it the NW8000 or is it the AUP320S? Check the top corner to find out. And now we'll compare the newer NW8000 against the Audio-Technica AT2020. Of course, the AT2020 is a very popular microphone, not only for content creators, but it does get use in studios for vocal recordings. Starting out, of course, here again, I'm on the NW8000. This is 75% gain with no processing. Now I'll switch over to the AT2020. And this is what the AT2020 sounds like. I have it connected into my Scarlett 8i6 with the gain set right at about noon. No processing applied. Of course, there's 48 volts phantom power as we have with any XLR condenser microphone. This is the uh, sound that you get out of the AT2020. Once again, a working distance here, a little over seven inches away, so very similar to the NW8000. So give you an idea of what the sound is like. Now uh, we'll uh, see if you can tell the difference. And of course, you've been hearing me on both microphones. Now that you have, can you tell the difference? Am I speaking on the NW8000 or the AT2020? Check the top corner to find out. And for the last comparison, we'll test the NW8000 against the Warm Audio WA47JR FET condenser microphone. 
So, of course, beginning here on the NW8000, I have the gain again at 75%. No processing applied. Now we'll switch over to the WA47JR. And now you're listening to me on the Warm Audio WA47JR FET condenser microphone. This microphone is widely used in studios. It's a very popular choice, about 16 times the price of the NW8000. So in a totally different category, but I just wanted you to hear kind of the range from entry level to uh, to a little bit um, more used in studios, a little bit higher end type of microphone. And you can certainly go a lot higher end than this, but uh, this will give you an idea of the raw sound again that you get out of the two microphones. This uh, microphone is connected into my Scarlett 8i6. I have the gain set at about 1230. No processing applied. This is the tone of the microphone. Now we'll see if you can tell the difference. And finally, again, you've heard me on both the NW8000 and the WA47JR. Can you tell the difference? Check the upper corner to find out. Okay, now that we've done some audio tests, let's go ahead and look at the physical performance of this microphone. So we're starting off with working distance. I've been telling you that I'm really within about 7-8 inches of this mic for most of this video. But uh, let's just see, if we get up closer on the microphone, this is the kind of sound you get. I'm not going to change the gain or anything here. And uh, so if you're in a really a kind of a closer difference, uh, this will give you an idea of the sound. Backing up to um, really about a foot away now. And uh, a foot away, again, very usable. This is a condenser microphone, so it's going to have a lot of ability to pick up sound. And again, as you see, as I kind of move around here on axis, off axis a little bit, this will give you uh, an idea of the sound. I'm going to back up to about two feet away. Okay, and this is about two feet away from the microphone, and so this is the sound you're getting at two feet of distance. You're going to, of course, start to pick up a lot more room noise uh, when you have this distance from the mic. But uh, again, uh, you can you can definitely get uh, you can get sound pickup at a greater distance. I recommend being up a little closer. And so moving back up here again to within that about seven or eight inches, I think this is kind of the sweet spot for you know having the microphone in frame, but it's not really competing with with you if that's what you're trying to do. Um, if you're recording you know vocals into this in a booth situation, you would uh, you would likely have it uh, a little bit closer than this. But for on camera, this is kind of the use I would expect. And next I'll move on to a proximity and plosives test. So as I get really close to the microphone to show you the proximity effect, you can see just what you're getting out of this. And it's kind of related to working distance again. You want to find a distance where it's uh, not altering the sound if you move just a little bit. But if you, you know, again, are off camera and you have the ability to record and really control the distance from the mic, you know, you're not animated, then, uh, then uh, you, you know, you may want to engage the proximity effect. Okay, now we'll go ahead and check out uh, plosive performance. People, people, because, because. And yeah, in my monitoring, it definitely we're getting plosives there. Not really terrible. And uh, but the thing that interests me here is that, again, this mic is supposed to have a frequency response of 20 to 20,000 hertz. I would expect to get uh, more low-end plosives so down in that 20 range. So I think we get a pretty uh, significant roll-off in the low frequencies happening. Now, this microphone does come with a uh, foam a pop filter or windscreen. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that on the mic and we'll try it out. Sorry for the noise here. Okay, and so this is with the built-in uh, built windscreen. You can also hear if it's coloring the sound at all, uh, as I expect it to do. It's hard to hear when you're monitoring this as you're speaking, but I'll listen to it back later on and let you know what I think in my final thoughts. But let's try the plosives on this. People, people, because, because. And yeah, it seemed to help definitely, uh, you know, compared to nothing. I'll take it off. And finally, uh, we'll try just a regular pop filter. People, people, because, because. And yeah, to me, that really kind of cleaned it up completely. So again, if you want to use this for vocal recording and you're in like a controlled environment booth where you didn't, uh, you know, you could control your distance and you weren't worried about the shot itself, you use a pop filter like this and it would give you, uh, give you the, uh, a little bit better sound. And since I know many of you would be thinking about using this for kind of a streaming application, gaming application, well, check out the background noise using a keyboard. So now I'm typing on a keyboard, and you can hear just how much of that that it picks up in the background. Okay, now we'll go ahead and check out the handling noise on this microphone. And tapping right on the microphone, I'm getting a lot of resonance frequencies and sounds coming out of there. Let's go ahead and tap the boom arm.
Yeah, it definitely picks up a lot of noise in my monitoring uh, through that. Again, you're not going to expect much of a shock mount that comes uh, with a microphone in this price point, but at least it uh, gives you uh, gives you something to put the microphone on. <laughs> um, I would say that you really want to make sure you're not really handling this mic or moving it around too much at all if you're uh, if you're using it for a vocal application. Okay, and the last physical test I'm going to do is the off-axis rejection and polar pattern. So right now I'm speaking directly into the microphone. Now I'm at 90 degrees to the microphone. This is the sound we're getting. Now I'm at 180 degrees right into the back of the microphone. And lastly, at the other 90 degrees, this is what the sound is like. And back again to directly into the microphone. So now that I've checked the off-axis rejection, let's talk a little bit about polar pattern. So on this microphone, of course, from the front, getting good pickup. I also noticed from the sides, I was getting very good pickup as well. From the back, very little pickup. And now this microphone is supposed to have a supercardioid polar pattern. Now supercardioid means I'm gonna have a narrower lobe of sensitivity in the front, and I'm gonna have a small lobe of sensitivity in the back. And I didn't find that here. I found, in fact, I had a wide lobe of sensitivity out well into the 90 degrees past, and really of nothing as far as a significant lobe of sensitivity in the back. And so this to me is more like a cardioid pattern. Even though the spec says super cardioid, I'm gonna call this a cardioid microphone. Okay, now we'll check out the frequency analysis comparison of the NW8000 versus the Shure SM57. This is for the rock guitar recording, of course. And as you can see, I mean, the capture really below about 8K is fairly reasonable between the two. The 57 definitely has a little bit, little bit greater sensitivity in some areas, but it's really above that range where we see the difference. The, the NW8000 is really not sensitive uh, above, above that kind of 8, 10K range. As we can see, a lot more information captured here on the 57. And so, you know, again, when I look at the frequency response, this microphone's rated at 20 to 20,000 hertz. Um, no, we're not provided with a frequency uh, frequency graph for the microphone, so I'm kind of a suspect on what the um, on what the sensitivity is in those higher frequencies here. And uh, and so, anyways, though, I would say that you know the recording was reasonable listening to them two back, just knowing that a little bit of the information isn't there. And now we're looking at the comparison of the blues guitar between the NW8000 and the SM57. And we can see that, again, the capture in that lower range, anything really below about 8K, is pretty reasonable between the two. Um, and, uh, and really, we're not having a lot of higher frequencies on this particular recording. The 57 uh, really doesn't show a lot in that range. And so for this application, the NW8000 does a reasonable job, again, compared to the 57 as kind of a standard for this application.
then finally look at the comparison here of the uh, NW8000 versus the 57 miking up the base cabinet. And we can see again a lot of similarities in these recordings. Not identical, but again the overall shape is kind of true to form between the two. So recording a base, a base amp through the NW8000 is something that's very doable. Certainly this microphone isn't going to accept the sound pressure level that an SM57 will, so you have to keep that in mind. But for uh, just basic recordings in, uh, you know, your kind of home studio environment, uh, the uh, you could use the 8000 to do that. Okay, and now we'll do a process demonstration here with the NW8000. And I'm using all free tools here in OBS Studio because I think that's a more likely use case. And if you're going to get a $35 microphone, I don't expect you to spend $500 on plugins and outboard gear. So what I've done here is I've applied RN noise suppression that's built into OBS Studio. And that's just to get rid of any clicks or pops or anything that might be happening in the background. It can help out if you've got AC noise, that kind of thing. And you'll see I've added in the stock compressor in OBS. I've got a three and a half to one ratio sitting here with a threshold right around minus 15. So anything uh, at that point, it starts compressing at a 3.5 dB to one ratio over. And I've got a fast attack and release happening here. And so again, this is to even out the transients. Then I've applied equalization and you can see I have Slick EQ and then I have TDR Nova. Slick EQ is a tri-band here and I've basically had a little boost around 100 hertz here, 2.5 dB. I've got a, a dip happening in the middle right around 1.1 uh, kilohertz, a little over that, but uh, minus 5 dB, so quite a bit of a dip going on there just to control some harsh frequencies. Then I've got a very, very small boost, half a dB at about 4.5 kilohertz, just for a little bit of presence. After that, I've got the Slick EQ. And for those of you familiar with my EQ Masterclass Dynamic EQ video, this, um, this is a dynamic EQ, and I'm using it here as a, a parametric EQ. I've got three frequencies that are getting rid of some resonance in the room that can be problematic. I also have a uh, high-pass filter going on here that's cutting out that occasional low rumble that you'll see in the bottom. And finally, I have a bit of a cut happening here, right in around 6.6 uh, .6 kilohertz with a sort of moderate Q, 2.5 dB cut, just to control again some of that over-boosted highs I think there are in this microphone. But I also have a dynamic EQ working at that same frequency where I have this uh, threshold set up at about negative 22, a little over that, uh, to give me compression on the sibilance. So I'm using this as a free de here as well, kind of customized to my voice sibilance 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 and you can see when i do that how every time i have an s it drags that down just to cut the harshness off so that uh, that's what i have going on then i've added an expander as well the expander is to attenuate frequencies below in this case minus 35 db so anything that's coming through at any frequency below that amplitude is going to be attenuated again at a three and a half to one ratio and that's really to uh, Get rid of any rumble, anything that might be left over that didn't get caught by the RN noise suppression. And finally, I've thrown a limiter on here just at minus one. And that's really just to ensure I don't clip. It's not really doing anything here. You'll notice I have the gain turned off. I always keep a gain in my plug-in chain just in case I need to make any adjustments before I get to the compressor or EQ. In the case of this microphone, levels all being what they are, I'm getting sound here between minus 16 and minus 12 dB in OBS Studio right out of the microphone through this chain. So that's a really good recording level. No need to really boost or cut this with gain. And so this is uh, with processing, makes a bit of a difference to my monitoring and uh, give you an idea of what you could get out of this uh, microphone. And now that we've had a chance to complete all these tests on the mic, let me give you my final thoughts. And again, keeping in mind, this microphone is a basic entry-level microphone, you know, designed for people that just want to plug it in and use it. It's, it's not going to compete with higher end options. Certainly, I mean, we can get better quality sound, better response, better performance if we, you know, go up to a higher level microphone and if we also, you know, start getting into some good quality interfaces. But for what it is, starting out, if you're kind of just getting into streaming or recording, you want to do a little bit of music recording at home as well. I think we, we saw that it's capable of that. Certainly the frequency response, I, I don't think it really performs in, in quite the way it's advertised. And again, the polar pattern I uh, found to be a little different. It's not really super cardioid. It has kind of a really wide, uh, wide cardioid pattern. But again, for, you know, for getting started, I think keeping in mind, you know, it's a $25 microphone. Uh, it is what it is. Not, a, not too bad in that price range. I think, you know, the fact that you can get something this decent for $25 
definitely going to be a step up from using the built-in microphone on you know on a laptop or a tablet because you can get it closer to your mouth you'll get you will get better sound with that a little bit of background noise from this i will say it's a fairly noisy microphone you can add some uh, free processing free plugins again and and i chose to use obs studio here because again i think a lot of people will use this for that type of application of course if you want to use it to record in your daw you can do that as well and you can add up some plugins and noise reduction in that to try and clean it up a bit. But I want to give you an idea of what could be done, you know, in a sort of a free application to keep this very affordable. And so would I recommend this microphone? Well, I guess if you're looking for something that's very basic to hook up and you have no intentions of using it for anything more than maybe some Zoom calls and a little bit of, uh, you know, light audio during uh, game streaming, it might be okay. Otherwise, I'd recommend saving up, get something a little bit better. It's going to give you a little better quality audio. You won't have to really apply so much processing to it to get it to a point where it's really usable for recordings. And so uh, again, if you're not looking to do that, this could be a good choice. If you have any ideas that you might want to record some music or you might want to make some higher quality voice recordings, I would suggest you wait, upgrade to something a little better. And if you're into audio and video, you want to level up the quality of your recording stream, check out one of the other videos on the screen. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.